Hey CFG, Speaker Saturday. Wow, what an exciting day it has been. I've watched as many of the lives as I possibly can. I had to take a little pause a couple of hours ago to actually cook my family's dinner. So <laughs> I'll catch up on the two that I missed. I think it's Debbie's and Yasmin's. <coughs> So I will catch up on those. Forgive me. Um, it was impossible to do both uh, watch you and watch the stove. So, so I'm Helen. I'm the guest speaker at most of Lisa's events and she's been the guest speaker at my events. It is amazing to be here. It really is. The topic for tonight's discussion is life after trauma. Now, the reason I've picked this is because many of you, after watching me speak live at events, usually with Lisa, you've messaged me from in this group to ask me, do I really believe that life can be magic and full of love and doing everything from a place of love? after experiencing trauma. And so I decided to explore that a little bit with you this evening. It's a beautiful evening. In this moment, you can see me, you can hear my voice. The sun is shining. In this moment, everything's perfect, everything's good. So in this moment, actually through the magic of technology, we are sharing the same moment in different, different spaces where it's the same moment, different viewpoints. I can't see you, but you can see me, but we're sharing the moment. Now that's pretty magical really, if you really think about it. Same moment shared by lots of different people all at the same time and me here with you with my voice so that's in itself quite magical and it, it, it genuinely does feel quite magical to be sitting here and talking with you like this so life after trauma for me really is all about being focused in the present moment it's very easy to get bogged down by life and you have a compound effect where something happened to you way back when and in your mind you, most people have a idea in their mind that something's happened to make them turn through their journey at a right angle and the dialogue that comes out when this happens, a traumatic event happens, is they just want their life back. They just want to get back to normal. Well, I put it to you that your normal after a traumatic event has been considerably altered. It's like taking the lid off Pandora's box. There's no way that you can have the same life that you had before whatever it is that you're carrying there's no way that you can be the same because your perception your perspective has been altered forever now that for those of you who have heard me talk before you already know that I was on my way to an appointment in 2006 in September on a very, very dull and raining, sheet rain, pouring down day. And I was assaulted by two guys. And it left me with a generous stab wound in my neck. I died at the scene and I woke up from that nightmare paralysed for seven years. So that in itself is pretty horrific, pretty traumatic. Uh, it's a pretty dire thing to have to live with and, and pretty dire thing to have to carry. But each day is made up of 24 hours. 
So each day there are thousands upon thousands of individual moments to experience. So life after trauma for me is genuinely all about being fully present in the moment and fully appreciating the moment and being thankful for another moment. Oh, I spoke yesterday about the value of meditation and what that means to me. And genuinely, hand on heart, being able to focus inside of myself and give gratitude to my body for sustaining me, for carrying me from A to B, for being able to carry my children and give birth to my children and being able to be the place where I live still after everything that happened. Being able to do that, being able to go within and be fully present and fully focusing and fully giving thanks to the individual parts of my body has truly, truly changed my life. The present moment is all we will ever have. When you focus on the past, you, you kind of get filled with, with sadness. Sadness is different to depression. Um, when I was in my darkest uh, times, I used to sob a lot and it was coming from a place of extreme sadness. I was mourning. I was mourning for the life I should have, be, should have, should be living. I wasn't appreciating the fact that I was still here and I was still me. Despite everything, I've always been a sparkly, magical kind of person. So I started the journaling process even more. I've, I've been a, a long time journal person and I started to recall things from my past that put a smile on my face. And I started to, you know, because I'd, I'd been in support groups and I'd been in, in uh, uh, mixing with, with people who'd been through similar experiences through the crim criminal justice system. And, you know, I kept hearing this thing, you know, I just want my life back. I just want my life back. Well, I didn't want my life back. I didn't want any of it back apart from being a mum. And in that moment when I realised this, I, I, I was a mum, I am a mum. So that actually didn't change by the event. So I started down this road of being fully present in the moment and recalling <clears throat> various experiences so I, I, I would sit and focus my mind and be really quite still and um, start, start to remember things that put a smile on my face. So when I, when I was about six, I was very musical and I was very um, singing on stage and I was in a lot of performances. Um, I... I played many roles like uh, Red Riding Hood and Goldilocks and Rapunzel and you know the fairy tale leads really in, in performances but there was one thing that I couldn't do I got a role as Dick Whittington in the Pied Piper and there was whistling in the role so every day I would run home and I would sit there and be really trying to whistle and I just couldn't whistle and I got more and more frustrated and I, the, the effort that I was putting into this was quite intense at age six. I was determined I was going to whistle and I vividly recalled that moment when a note came out for the first time and so even though I was carrying the experience, the trauma of, of what happened to me, what was given to me, which I didn't choose. I was able to start recalling happy 
moments like this and journaling about them. And the more I did this, the more I realised, <clears throat> actually, life after trauma includes all the experiences that had gone before. So is it life after trauma or life before trauma? Is there a differentiation between those two things? Or is it actually the same thing? Because here I am now in a really good place and I'm able to recall these happy memories at the drop of a hat. So like the first time I, I knitted knitting stitches, I think I was about four. And the first time I held a paintbrush and the first time I played a musical instrument the first time I picked up a guitar. All these things, um, there's so many. I, I can recall them now without feeling broken and without feeling like, oh, you know, that's how I was before. This is this is the, the me who I am now. I do all these things now. And so for me, I've I've come full circle. And yes, there was this traumatic event in 2006. Yes, it's been a long winding road to get to where I am now. And there's a, a lot of professional neuroscience, linguistic programming, all kinds of things that professionals talk about when dealing with trauma. But for me, the essence is being able to be fully present in the moment, being fully in tune with you, who you want to be, how you want to feel remembering who you truly are and i have always been a pretty magical person from a very young age yes there was lots of trauma yes there was lots of abuse less yes there was lots of dark experiences but i thrived regardless And you see, to me, knowing this about myself and really feeling into it and really appreciating it, it's taught me a hell of a lot. It's taught me about the, the me that I am today, the me that sits in front of you right now. It's, it's all about remembering who, who I am and who I have always been. These traumatic events was like... The 2006 experience was one event in amongst thousands of good ones. So it's, our, our minds naturally blow things up and make them enormous. So life after trauma to me is getting back to being bigger and more sparkly and more magical than the trauma. I'm not going to tell you that it's an easy thing to do because for me personally, it's taken cast iron willpower to stick with it and be holistically healthy, allow my mind, my body, my soul, my spirit, every essence of me, every cell of my being, it's, it's taken solid determination and solid dedication to get here and be here but I am here and to answer the question again do I really believe that life can be magical yes of course I do I'm a red-blooded single woman I'm a mum of six I through this experience I've started my own business I'm very successful I've, I've I've appeared on 17 different television programs and media projects in the mainstream. And the whole experience has just been amazing. It's, it's been phenomenal. Having the inside of my abdominal cavity being operated on, on national television live was quite, quite the experience. But I did it. And that experience is actually bigger than the trauma. It's been an amazing ride, an amazing journey, and I'm extremely thankful. 
so every day there's been different things and and yes i can honestly answer the question and say that there is life after trauma and that life is pretty magical it's been a pleasure talking with you today thank you lisa for speaker saturday it's been amazing to see everybody's lives thank you